Now I'm going to put in some common inline elements. List, and it'll have a series of list items. Elements like bold, strong, italics, emphasis, big, small, and there's others, subscript, sub superscript, sup, but these are the ones you use quite a bit. Anchors, we know them as hyperlinks. So whenever you use the A tag to create a hyperlink, that's an inline element. Since inline elements need to go inside of block elements, you know that whenever you do a hyperlink, it must be inside of a block element. It can be inside of a paragraph. It can be inside of a table cell, a TD tag. It could be inside of a div. Putting them inside of paragraphs is very common. Oh, of course, and since we know that list item is a block element, an anchor tag could be inside of a list item. Images. The IMG inline image is an inline element. So the image tag will always be inside of a block element. I didn't draw attention to it in my earlier videos, but you'll notice that when I was putting images in, I would put them inside of a div element. I would start off with a div tag and put my image tag inside of it. That's because I wanted a block element to contain my inline element. The span element is pretty interesting. We'll use that more frequently in the latter half of the course once we start doing some trickier things with uh, navigation menus and CSS. But span is useful for formatting chunks of inline elements or text that are within a block element. They're kind of like the inline version of the div. We'll use the div quite a bit to mark off blocks of our pages. Well, the span is used to mark off sections within blocks of our pages. And let's see, these are probably the most common ones here. I've got text formatting elements, anchor tags, image tags, spans. We'll use this one from time to time. The break, to break to a new line. And uh, that's a pretty good list for our common inline elements, and we'll come across more. The break, you'll use that from time to time. The input element, which is used in conjunction with forms. The form tag is a block element. Uh, the field set tag is a block element. I didn't mention that in that previous list. Input elements are things like text boxes and check boxes and radio buttons that you can put in forms. Those are inline elements. And then I'll take off that last line. There we go. So there's some list of common inline elements. So now we have common block elements and common inline elements. There. So once you get familiar with block versus inline, now you're going to have to start practicing when you can put one inside of the other. I'm going to give you an example of an inline element contained within a block element. So since list item is a block element, and we know that anchor is an inline element, I should be able to put a hyperlink inside of this list element. There. The anchor tag. I have the anchor tag with the hyper reference attribute href equals an empty set of quotes. That's my anchor tag. There's a closing anchor tag that tells the browser to stop making a hyperlink. The word span is going to be the text on my page that is a hyperlink. When somebody clicks on the word span, they will be taken to a web page. Which web page I don't know yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the web do a Google search real quick. HTML span element. So I'll find a page that talks about these. Okay. HTML span and div elements, fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and copy this web address and I'm going to paste it right in between these quotes. Now it's a big web address, of course. Didn't look out and find a small one but ahref equals, then I have this big web address, 
So the word span will be a hyperlink going there. So let's find out. Save. Back to my browser. Back to my page. Refresh. I can see that the word span is a hyperlink. If I click on the word span, I'm taken to that particular web page. There. The word span is a hyperlink. And this is a valid way of doing this. And the valid way is an important way. Because remember, our goal is to do valid XHTML1 strict. So, let's check this out on the validator. Back at the browser, I'm going to go to validator.w3.org. I'm going to validate by file upload, browse, find my block versus inline, and check it. Great, this page is valid XHTML1 strict, but I'd like to show you something. What if my logic says, you know what, I want the entire list item to be a hyperlink. So let me take the entire anchor tag, cut it out, and paste it outside of the list item. There we go, so I have my ahref, then I have my list item, and I'll take my closing anchor tag and I'll move that outside of there. So, the end result is my list item is inside of my anchor tag. Now here's the frustrating thing about this. When I save this and I go to my browser and refresh, it looks perfectly normal. It looks just the way it looked before. And so you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? It's getting the job done. There it is. The word span is a hyperlink. If I click on it, it takes me to the page I want to. But if I go to my validator now, go back a couple steps and hit check again, my page is not valid XHTML1 strict. And if I look at my errors, look at all of this. Okay. Document type does not allow element anchor here, assuming missing li start tag. Well, the browser was expecting a list item, but instead I gave it an anchor tag, so it's confused by that. By the way, this brings me up to something else that's going to come up with everybody. You are going to get lots of validation errors. Please do not stress out about them. Whenever you get validation errors, here's what I want you to do. Only focus on the first one. Because as we just saw, I intentionally created one small mistake on my page, but look at this. It says I have five errors. So, even though I'll tell you not to worry, I'm going to get some emails from some of you. Say, Ralph, I'm so frustrated, I've got 50 errors on my validation page. That doesn't matter. The only thing I care about is the first error. So, whenever you get errors on a validator, and I promise you will, if you don't, you're not trying hard enough, you fix the first mistake, and then you save and you revalidate and you only worry about the first mistake because fixing one mistake can alleviate multiple errors. So it doesn't really know what's going on, but it knows I did something wrong, and it gives me some area to look into. Uh, line 64, line 64, line 65, line 66, line 67. So basically it is completely confused about my use of an inline element outside of a block element. So I will fix that. There we go. The page is valid again. So inline elements go inside of block elements.